Welcome to Rare Whiskey Friday. I'm Daniel. And oh, you want me to do the bit? Welcome to Rare Whiskey Friday. We're gonna go through and sample a few whiskeys. Some might be larger stories, most are not. God, it's been too long. Uh, <laughs> more likely to be craft without a large amount of distribution. If you should be so lucky as to live in an area where you can get your hands on one of these bottles, you're welcome for the review. And thank you to the magnificent bastard who sent it in. I've been letting you do it this whole time. I lost the middle do you know who? You know who would have crushed it? <laughs> Brianna. <laughs> no, no, she totally wouldn't. But she would not. She'd be like, welcome to Rare Whiskey Friday. <laughs> oh, by the way, you know who? I'm gonna say this because it's gonna ruin it, you know? Yeah. You know who dad says Brianna is? Or Brianna? Carol Burnett. That is an old reference, man. Yeah. Let me, let me dust off the archives here. It's Carol Burnett. There was the a Carol, Carol Burnett, Burnett show. show. Yeah. From forever ago. Okay. Yeah, it's Carol Burnett. All right. <laughs> okay, so this is a whole day thanks to uh, Ben White, a magnificent bastard. All right, we got a whole day's worth of stuff. Yeah, this is Rare Whiskey Friday, and there's more to come, but we're not going to do it today. Ben White, you magnificent bastard. <laughs> This is all McMinimums, which is the uh, brand in Portland area in Washington, where they they basically go around to towns, like all the main towns and places in Oregon. They buy up any cool bars yeah. and turn them into McMinimums bars. McMinimums. And they all have different names and different vibes, and they sort of embrace whatever was local or historical in that area. Yeah. I'm a, there, there's a separation in Portland of people who think McMinimums are the devil, right. and the people who are like, McMinimums is cool. Okay. I think McMinimums is fing cool. It I think they do a like, great job. It sounds like a halfway stop between like something super local and Chili's. No, no, it's not as bad as Chili's. So basically, you're saying it's a chain, but it's a chain. It's a local company, and it's not a chain. So it's not a chain. No, it's just a local company. He's so like, it's only in Oregon. Every bar you go to is totally different. Okay. But owned by the same guys. Huh. And they embrace the local unique. Well, my favorite one is the one they have in Bend that I can't remember. Although the one in Portland, they took over a movie theater complex oh, and converted cool. it into an entire entertainment area that'd be cool. with bars yeah, yeah. and a theater and restaurants. And yeah. like you just walk in like it's the mall yeah. and roam around. Or no, it was a school. That's what no, it was. No, it's, it was a school. Movie theater would be better. It was a, maybe I've done that too, but I'm thinking of the school. It was like an element. It was like an elementary mm, or a junior high. It's fun to say. McMinimins. And they converted all the different parts of the school into restaurants and bars and things like that. McMinimins. This one is Edgefield Distillery. Yeah, 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 yeah. McMinimins. This is Edgefield Hogshead Whiskey Pot Still Malt Barley. This is a this is a single malt. Right? And 46%. Yeah. Now, this is Troutdale, Oregon. 1998, they started doing stuff Ooh, there. Oh, you know what I got a little dose of? Mmm. Welch's grape. Oh, that's weird, but yeah, you're right. Yeah. Plus butterscotch. Welch's grape juice. That's weird. It's not strong, but it's there. Yeah, it's like right in the middle. And then surrounding that is this sort of oaky note and vanilla and caramel. Man, I can't get away from that note. And it's, kind it of keeps gra every time I go in, it just like nope. Welch's grape. It doesn't hold me because I don't drink Welch's grape juice. Neither I don't do I. But you, if you've never had the Welch's grape juice, then like a grape candy. I don't do grape. I hate grape flavored things. I eat grapes. I'm fine with grapes. We'll see how it goes for you, McMinimins. <laughs> That'd be it. honestly. I don't think if it shows up on the nose, I never had that much grapiness on a whiskey on the taste. We'll see. Mm, no, on the taste, it's. Oh, weird. It's fruity, yet caramel, yet granola. I'm still finding. You're still finding the grape? That's the fruit for you. It is. It's like a grape candy. I'm not hating it. It does feel at odds with the rest in the notes, though. Yeah, the, normally I'm getting a, a more like a raisin in a note like that. Or like plum or something. Like, but, a, like a sugary grape candy. Mm-hmm. All right. Trippy. But then the maltiness surrounding that, there's yeah. going to be a honey mixed in with it, that sweet and malty note. This is first impressions day. And then finishing. There's like a creamy quality on the finish. Yeah. That's nice. Kind of cool, huh? Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Uh, you, did you find too much grape on the taste for yeah, you? Yeah, the, the weird fruit threw me in the middle. 
the taste, the, the finish keeps switching it up. Because uh, now, there's like uh, a pastry quality. I wonder, finish. no, that I like. Yeah. I'm getting this buttered pastry at yeah. the finish. Yeah. Mixed with a little bit of wood, woody tannin note. Minimum. That I'm fine with. But there's a, I think if I came to this not having had what we had before this, mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't find the same fruit note. Okay. So I'm, I'm probably being directed by that last thing we had. Mc All right. Minimum. Set that one aside. We're going to shift to um, a white whiskey that I really wanted to try. Can we compare? This is their CPR, and there's no comparison. Uh, this is their CPR distillery, and this is their what they call white owl. Man, that cork is really in there. You need an adult? No, it's just grippy. All right, this is a wheat based from the Cornelius Pass Roadhouse Distillery. What's wheat the, and barley. What's the proof on it? Woo, that is new makey strong. 49.3% alcohol, 98.6 proof, almost 50. Very new makey, but it's not bad new make. Oh, 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 there is a hard candy, like a lollipop note, like you get at the dentist. Almost like a lemon. Lemon, the yeah. yellow ones. Lemon sucker. That's bizarre. Yeah, sucker. It is sucker. It's mm -hmm. a lemon with a little loop handle. Yeah. yeah. And you put it on your finger and you spin it around. Yeah. And if it was too sloppy, you'd fling some of that syrupy spit on the back, oh, of, no, the back of your mom's car seat. Really? And Did then you, you try and wipe it off and didn't wipe off. And then it's like really sticky the rest of the year. I don't remember that at all. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's very agricultural. Like this is very farm grain, dusty. Yeah, but it doesn't get so heavy. With that, it maintains like this sweet accessibility with those notes. Yeah. No, this is a well cut whiskey. Mm -hmm. I don't. There's no faults or off notes or weird. This is like prime, perfect heart cut new make. They're using an alembic still, which is like a brandy type thing. Halfway through, this bit of an herbal yeah. note shows up. That's why. So it starts with that sweetness and then goes into the herbal. So, I would love to see that aged, man, as a wheat whiskey. Yeah. There's something on the base of that. On the palate? On the, yeah. Something. It's not soapy. It's not paper. No. But there's a not sweet thing on the bottom end of that. Yeah. That's a well-cut whiskey. I mean, if I was putting out that new make, I would be excited to put it into barrels and see what happened. Yeah, and it's then, not quite fruity enough for what I like in the new make. Mm -hmm. Even our bourbon new make stuff is a little more fruit heavy, mm -hmm. but I but it's good. And there's a sugar sweetness on that taste. Mm, it's, yeah. It almost tastes like there's so much sweetness on the top end that there is sugar added, but there's not. It's just cuts. Dude. Uh, we can get an adult. Yeah, we might need one. I'm trying to wipe the hand grease off of it. There we go. How often do you grease? That was a combination with a sticker. How often do you grease your hands? Uh, yeah, every 45 minutes. Yeah. I don't like dry fingers. Like, is it like an oil <laughs> of Olay situation? Yeah. Do you go... In essential oils? <laughs> now that's the lotion, guys. This is oil, not lotion. It's a different thing. No, no, that's lotion. This Olay! Is oil. Olay! <laughs> Olay! Okay, so these guys do a thing called Devil's Bit. Every year... Um, and they release like a special edition, 200 milliliter bottle. Uh -huh. This one is a rye and malted barley, seven years old. Okay, so that rye note is not yeah. surprising. I get a little bit of a licorice on the nose. Yep, licorice and honey. So you get licorice, and you know what? It's a honeyed tea. Uh, it's like licorice. You and said licorice, and now it's ruined it for me. I hate licorice. Licorice and honeyed tea. It is. Licorice. You got some tea and you put some honey in it. Even a little lemon. And then you stir it with some licorice. Ah, there's a lot of licorice in that rye. Oh, I like the taste. Oh yeah. Oh. Ooh. Don't like the nose. Do like the palate. Much more baking spices. Like yeah. a bready cinnamon, almost a nutmeg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the baking is there. Uh, this is a St. Pat's release. I like for them. Yeah. Hence the devil's bit. I like the taste. Of a, better than the nose. It's a little at 46%. I think my sense is this wants to give a bit more 
uh, that the proof is allowing it to give. Because mm -hmm. 46, it's not a you know super super low proof, mm -mm. but yeah, and the flavor is like wow, there's some interesting stuff going on there. But I think it wants to give me a bit more because it's still there's still this general, a slight wateriness. There's there's don't get me wrong, there's a lot there. There's a slight wateriness. Mm. Makes me think it wants to give some more. Go back to the malt. After everything we've been drinking, that malt is softer and more approachable. Huh. This is hands down my favorite of the lineup so far. McMinimins. McMinimins. All right, we're going to try something to finish. Yeah, the McMinimins. The McMinimins, though. They're doing good products. McMinimins. All right, so this is a flavored whiskey. Oh, okay. Called Aval Pota. It's apple flavored whiskey. Mm -hmm. Now, I hate apple flavored things, so I'm not totally it, looking forward to it. it. I think somebody's keeping up with the list of the things Daniel hates. Yeah. I like apples. At a certain I point, like apple pie. At a certain point, it becomes easier just to keep a short list of the things you like. Yeah. And just forget about it. Just assume he hates everything. That's accurate. Ever. And then here's a handful of things that he likes. I don't like apple juice, though. <laughs> That's gross. The boys, every time we stop somewhere to get drinks on the drive, they always get apple juice. Yeah. And every time I'm like, I'll crack a window. Really? Yeah. It bothers me. <laughs> <laughs> Smell of apple juice filling the car. Mm -hmm. Ugh. I thought you grew up too poor for diva school. No, no. No. Wow. There's divas even in the ghetto. This is not apple flavored. This is, this is apple pie. Yeah. A funky mm -hmm. apple pie. It's a cinnamon syrup apple pie. Good night. It's basically, you take a really syrupy cinnamon cooked baked apple pie and you pour um, whiskey in there. Yeah. You strain off all of the chunky bits. Yeah, you got this. Yeah. You know, I love apple pie, actually. Yeah. And this reminds me of the kind of apple pies you get, not from the store, mm -hmm. but from like a homestead right. bake shop. You know what? You know, I, I understand this is flavored based on the nose. It's hard for me to hate it. I know. Yeah. If, I mean, at Christmas, can it, you imagine? My rule is if it's good, it's good. And so far, the nose for me, it is, it's good. But it is too far beyond the pale for me to think of this as it's not whiskey. whiskey. It's not whiskey. It's beyond, this is something else. This is me enjoying something else. This is Christmas. We should be opening this at Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, that's Christmas. Wow. That's straight up. Imagine if that was in a hot beverage. That Or cold. It's actually not overly clingy. For a flavored product, it's pretty damn subtle. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> hold on a second. It just goes down. Good night. You could get screwed up the, the with fact, that. Hold on a second. I think this is speaking Daniel's love language. 33%. The fact that you don't think this is clingy? Yeah. Like, this is the most clingy. No, it's sugar. This is the most sugar clingy. clingy, but. This is as clingy as the syrup from apple pie. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Like, I'm still, for one sip in, and it tastes like it's still in my mouth. Yeah, this is apple strudel. That's what this is. Mm. It's not apple pie, it's apple strudel. Give me another dose there. Right? Mm. You're gonna ice this bad I'm boy? Ice it, yeah. Why am I liking this so much right now? This is bad. This is dangerous. No, this, this is the only flavored whiskey I've ever had that I actually want to keep pouring. This will get you in trouble. Oh, at Christmas, man, at holidays? With a finger hook? <laughs> Come on. So, um, this has the makings, at least, you know, whenever you're smelling and drinking it, of a local smash hit. Oh, yeah. Like people are in the new, hey, Wait have you tried such year. and such down the road? It's like so good. They bring it to a barbecue. It's like, oh, man, what is this? You know what I would do if I was them? Yeah. I would make this like pumpkin spice at Starbucks. Mm -hmm. Like you wait every year for the day mm -hmm. that the apple batch comes out mm -hmm. and it only comes out in the fall. Yeah. Yeah. And then it goes away. Yeah. Here's where it's going to screw you up. Especially, go ahead, try it. Especially if you're used to drinking whiskeys neat, like uh, the floor is 40%. It's better neat. And 40% 40, 40 is a really soft, effortless thing mm -hmm. for you. Then by the time you get into 33, is that what you said? Yeah, this is so good. 33 is still a lot of alcohol, <laughs> but the speed and ferociousness oh my, that you could drink, that you could drink this Oh with. my, you could drink, you could guzzle that right. like a juice box. Right, this isn't necessarily a good thing. 
depends what kind of weekend you're trying to have. Good night. But yeah, that's, uh, that's the thing. I was prepared to just be thrown off and be like, nah, blah, 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 Apple. So. That's really good. I think the bottle so with the ready. finger hook, that's on point. The label, I don't think that's really conveying what's happening in this. It, this looks like it's going to be a much more traditional, like old school heritage recipe. No, maybe no. some weird challenging things that... I think because they started with malt whiskey, mm -hmm. you got the grainy bready note. Mm. And that's what fixed it from feeling like a cheap shot, low hanging fruit, lazy flavored whiskey. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I gotta stop drinking this. I got a work day to do. And this is not helping. I at least need to, I put the ice in and everything. Yeah. I at least need to finish this. Okay. Uh, here's the fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, I fight for a friend. Steal, but you steal your liver's heart. And if you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us.